No, there were no assurances for a timetable. We had an exchange of views about the uh, position, the known position, both sides know. Uh, government is uh, insisting that they need more time to prepare the negotiations because of the complexity. So no indication from her, as has been intimated by Donald Tusk and Boris Johnson uh, yesterday, that January, February might be the starting position. Yeah, I spoke with Donald Tusk about uh, uh, his meeting and uh, his impression, and I saw that Boris Johnson yesterday night, just after I left from Downing Street, said January, February, we would be happy if it would even be earlier, but uh, perhaps next week and on the party congress of the Conservative Party, we will know more. There is clearly a stumbling block over freedom of movement. Theresa May has said um, she recognises the people do want some restrictions. So with that in mind, it's not just the EU we're going to have to withdraw from, it's the single market and also the, the, the customs union. We have to way, we have to find a way. Once more. I want to repeat one thing. You seem to be intimating there. No, no. Yes, you probably will. We are in a, in, a, in, a, in a very difficult situation. A G7 country, the second economy of the single market of the European Union, uh, a veto power of the Security Council of the United Nations is leaving the European Union, the United Kingdom. That's a, a big problem for us, for the European Union. And those who say they didn't take the lesson are wrong. We, we took the lesson. I take this very serious. Without the United Kingdom, the European Union is very much weaker than with the United Kingdom. But the other way around, without a full access to the single market, the United Kingdom is weaker. So what we need are pragmatic solutions. I see that problem that the United Kingdom need, especially London, need full access to the single market, but has a referendum not to accept free movement. And on the other hand, free movement is one of the constitutive principle of the single market we can't give up. I know this is extremely difficult to find a solution, but we can't find a solution if we don't negotiate and therefore I get back to what we said at the beginning. I urge the government to trigger Article 50 that we could really enter into the details of such a debate. Could you veto it? Could you veto if it? If at the end the European Parliament could say no to such a treaty. Has it happened before? In a lot of cases, uh, the European Parliament refused international treaties. You need to be involved in this negotiation. From the first day. This and the British side need to carry you with them. That was a main item uh, between uh, Prime Minister May and me yesterday. Uh, you reminded her that you well, are she was, well, she was well aware and uh, we agreed that uh, from the earliest moment, the negotiator of the European Parliament, Guy Verhofstadt, the former Belgian Prime Minister, leader of the Liberal Group in the European Parliament, should be involved in all talks. You say you're listening to people, but a lot of people say there's too much waste in Europe. And just looking at your recent meeting in Bratislava, you meet in a castle, you go on a boat trip, and for many people that's a perfect reflection of how Brussels appears to be. It's on high ground, it's devoid of any reality, distant from the electorate. <laughs> Very nice question. Who decided to go on that boat? And who is Brussels? Who is Brussels? Do you need me? to go on a boat? No, wait, wait a minute. Who is Brussels? Me, Juncker, Tusk, that's Brussels. That decision was taken by Merkel, Hollande, Fizzo, Renzi, the prime ministers of the European Union, the heads of states, that's not me. I would have preferred that they gather in, uh, uh, in Brussels. So you condemn the decisions oh, to go on a boat and to I go on a day trip on the... It's, it's not up to me to... to but, it's the, but would you accept it's the kind of message, the kind no, of... No, 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 wait a minute. Uh, this is the usual, your usual rhetoric. Brussels. Who is Brussels? Is Merkel Brussels? That was Merkel and Hollande who decided. Is that Brussels? But I'm asking you if you accept, Let's as David Cameron said all along, there yeah, is yeah. too much waste in Europe. Yeah, yeah. With, even within your office. Yeah, yeah. Especially that man lost the referendum after we made the biggest concessions to him. Okay, this is uh, the past. I repeat, who is Brussels? The European Union is not a federal state. The European Union is a union of sovereign countries. The decisive people in Brussels are the heads of states and government. Okay. Let's talk about leaders because you've been very outspoken on one man who could become leader and that's Donald Trump in the United States. I think you said he was a, a nightmare for Europe. Do you really believe that? Yes. 
normally I say what I think and what I believe. Yes, I think this is a nightmare. So how are you, if he was elected, how are you going to unpick that? Because you're going to have to negotiate with him. If he is elected, that's the sovereign will of uh, the United States uh, citizens and voters. Then we have to live with him. I prefer at the White House somebody who is entering into details, who is listening to advisers and who is not provoking, uh, but the other way around, uh, trying to moderate in an everyday, more complex world. Do you think he's encouraging these populist movements in Europe that you've talked For about? For sure. Look to your uh, country, fellow countryman, Mr. Farage. Uh, this is the same thinking and you can't expect that I support the friends of Mr. Farage.